from Smart Interviews. I hope you are doing great. So today we are going to discuss a medium level linked list problem from lead code. Okay, the problem statement name is rotate list. Before you watch the video, I would highly suggest you to pause it here, try it out on your own and then continue watching. Alright, so let's go through the problem statement once. So here they are saying that you are given head of a linked list and you have to rotate the list to the right by k places. Okay. So rotating towards the right side means clockwise direction. Let's go through an example. So here you are given a list 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and you are given k value as 2. So you have to rotate this list by 2 times towards the right side. Now if you do first rotation what will happen? For this list the 5 will come to the beginning in first rotation. So the list will look like 5, 1, 2, 3, 4. If you do one more rotation, what will happen? 4 will come to the beginning. So it will be 4, 5, 1, 2 and 3. Let's do the example here. So you are given something like 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. Okay. And you are given a value of k, something like 3 now. So we are going to trace it to make some observations. Let's say that you have to rotate it for the first time. What will happen? This node will come to the beginning. Now it will look like 5. Then you have your 2. Sorry, you will have your 1, 2, 3 and 4. Right. If k is equals to 2, what will happen? You will have your 4, 5, 1, 2 and 3. Let's continue further. If k is equals to 3, you will have your 3 in the beginning followed by 4, 5, 1 and 2. Okay. What if k is equals to 4? It is uh, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 1. We will do it one more time. What if k is equals to 5? This 1 will come to the beginning. If this 1 comes to the front, so the list will become 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. Is this similar to anything? Yes, this is the original list itself. So let me change the color of it. If you look at this list and this one. These two are same. But how did this happen? Because you are rotating it for how many times? Five times. And what is the length of this list? The length of this list is also 5. If you rotate a length of 5 by 5 times, what will happen? You will get your original list back. Right. So, we will continue for further. What if k is equals to 6? What will you get? Again, your 5 will come to the beginning. So, it will be 5, 1, 2, 3 and 4. It looks exactly similar to k equals to 1, right? So can I say your k equals to 6 is similar to k equals to 1? In the same way, if I do for k equals to 7, what will I get? I am going to get 4, 5, 1, 2 and 3. It is similar to which one? It is exactly similar to k equals to 2 rotations. That means obviously your k equals to 8 will be similar to k equals to 3. It is repeating it. Exactly. So that means when someone told you to rotate a list by 6 times, for the same example will you do it 6 times? No. You have to do it only once. One rotation is sufficient. If it is 7, it is sufficient to do only 2 rotations. In the same way, can you tell me what if k is equals to 10? How many rotations will you do? According to this example, 
9 will be 4 and 10 will be equals to 5. But what is 5? What is 5? 5 is nothing but 0 rotations. Because if you look at this one, this is 0th rotation. So your k is 5, that means 5 is 0. When k is given as 10, there is no need to even rotate it. In the same way, what if k is equals to 15? What if k is equals to 15? k is equals to 15 will also turn out to be 5, which will be 0 rotations. That means, are you getting some intuition here? Exactly. So here, you are getting the length of the list and whenever a k value is given, you just need to perform modulo with it. So, if you do for the first one, one modulo 5, you are going to get one rotation. What is 2 modulo 5? 2. 3 modulo 5 is 3. 4 will be 4. 5 will be 0. And what if you do for 6? You are going to get 1. If you do it for 7, you are going to get 2. In the same way, if you are going to do it for 10, what will happen? You are going to get 0 back. If you do it for 15, you are going to get 0 back. So, this is how you will decide your rotations or this is how you will minimize your rotations using this formula. Alright. Now, we understood that for given k, you have to do this to reduce the total number of rotations. This is fine. Now, how will we proceed further? Once you decide the rotations, have to continue or have to get your required output. Alright. So, let us stick to the given example. So, here you know you are given k is equals to 3. And this is your output. Alright. Have to achieve this output. If you look at your output and if you compare it with your input, what is happening? In your output, these last three things came to the beginning. These last three things were in the beginning and you attached this to the later. Right. Now, we will try to do the same. You know your k value is 3 after doing this formula. Let us try to segregate them into two parts. So, I can say this will be your first part and this will be your second part. You are going to attach your first part to your second part to get the required output. Okay. Now, in order to separate it into two parts here, you need to travel till here. How will you know you have to travel only this part? How will you know you have to travel only this part? Because you know you have to shift last three elements. If last three elements are shifted, how many elements are left? Two elements are left. Have to get that value by simply doing your, uh, maybe I can say first part. Your first part is nothing but total length of the list minus k which is nothing but 5 minus 3, which will give you 2. So, what is the length of your first part? 2. And what is the length of your second part? Length of your second part is nothing but your k, right? Which is, which is not required to be computed. So, since you got your first part length as 2, you have to start from here. And how many steps will you jump? You have to stop at 2. You should not stop at 3 because this is the start of the second part. So that means you are going to make first part minus one number of steps. So that means two minus one steps, which is one step. From here, you will jump to this part. Once you reach here, you now have to break this part. How will you break it? You will simply write two dot next equals to null. If you do it, this connection will be lost. But should we store it before breaking the connection? Exactly, you have to store it, right? So what you are going to do is, let me take this as a second head. Okay. 
So you are going to write second head is equals to two dot next. Now you store this part and you can break this connection. Once this connection is lost, you have your two lists separated. This is your first list and this is your second list. Now the only task is to connect this first list at the end of the second list. So here, this is how you have to do the further process. So what will you do now? In order to connect your 5 next to 1, you need to reach 5. How will you reach 5? So let's uh, do it over here. This is your 1 and this is your 2. Alright, this is your uh, 1 and 2. Now, this is your 3, 4 and 5. This is your head and this is your second head. Now your target is to reach this 5. How will you reach it? From the beginning, you have to go till a point where dot next is not equals to 9. So, if you keep on starting from here, is dot next equals to 9? No, you have 4. So, you will jump here. Is next null for it? No. So, you will go to 5. Is next null for 5? Exactly. So, you have to stop here. That is how you will reach this. Let's name it as tail. Okay. Now, you got your tail. Can you tell me how will you connect your uh, tail and head? Simply by doing tail dot next is equals to head. If you do this, what will happen? This 1 and 2 will be connected like this. Now, all you need to do is just return your second head, which will give you your required output. So, I'll just repeat it once again, a small summary for it. Alright. So, you will be given a list and you have to rotate it by k number of times towards the right side. So, we made an observation over here that is, there is no need to do k number of rotations if the k value is very huge. What you can do simply? You can do k equals to k model to reduce the total number of rotations if it's very huge, if the k value is very large which is greater than L value. Alright. Once you did this part, you know you have to separate the list into two parts. One is the first part which will go to the last. Okay. How will you do that? By getting the, how many things should be there in the first part? You will get it by using the formula L minus K. Okay. This will tell you how many nodes will be there in the first list. So, you know that there are two nodes in the first list. So, how many steps you have to jump? You have to jump one step. Okay. Then you will get this point, simply break this and attach this list at the last of 5. Alright. So, we will code it up very quickly. So, here uh, you are given head right? Let's maintain some temporary things to not lose the original data. Okay. And also one more thing. Let's have a small base condition. What if your head is null? Is it really required to even rotate? Or even if you are head dot next is null. If you have only one node, what will you do? You rotate multiple times, you will get the same thing. So, simply return head itself in this case. If not, first thing you will do is get the length of the linked list. So, let me write it as L and I will call some function link to get the length of the linked list. So, this is uh, list node and so you are going to return integer right so the return type should be integer and length over here and what did you pass you are, you passed node over here so i'll just use it and how will you find the link, length of a linked list simply by taking some count variable and here you will write while your head not equals to none, what will you do? Just increment the count and move your head to the next step. Head dot next. At last just return the count. Now you got your length of the link list. Once you got your length of the link list, what will you do? Minimize the rotations if the value of k is greater than l. So how will you do that? k equals to k mod l. Now, what if k becomes 0? 
that means there is no need to do rotations so we will write that condition here if k becomes 0 directly return head because there are no rotations happening all right now what's the next thing as i already mentioned let's maintain some temporary pointer to not lose the original list so let's take it list node and maybe the name of it is t it is equals to head now now what will you do how many steps should you move you have to move L minus k number of L minus k minus one number of steps. So I'll take some x value and x is nothing but L minus k minus one. Okay. So for loop i equals to zero to i less than x i plus plus, and here you're going to move your temporary t equals to t next. Now you reach the end of the first part. Once you reach the end of the first part, what should you do? Get the second head. So let's declare it. Second head is equals to uh, t next. Now you got your second next. Once you got your second next, what will you do? Simply break the connection between first part and second part. How to do that? t next is equals to null. Now you have two separate parts. One is h and sh now what's the next step get the tail pointer of sh right so for that we'll maintain a temporary pointer i can say tsh which is pointing to sh so here you'll write while tsh next not equals to null you're going to move your tsh all right, now we will stop exactly at your second ending of the second part. Once you stop there, what will you do? You just need to connect TSH next to your uh, head, which is this. And you have to return something. What is it? SH, right? So just return. So this is what we'll do here. Let's try to run and see. Okay, it got accepted. Let's submit. All right. So we are done with it. Okay, guys. See you in the next video. Thank you for watching. Please like, share and subscribe for more such content.